Go to chapter 15. All right, are you there? So, chapter 15. Stakeholder model versus shareholder model. So, when you talk about stakeholders, a stakeholder is an individual or a person who can have, who, which, whatever happens in that business could have, or whatever decisions he or she takes, or whatever the business, whatever decision the business takes, could have an impact on that individual. That's what a stakeholder is. So we can say a stakeholder is a person. Here they go, they said a stakeholder is a person, group of group or organization who can affect or be affected by the actions, objectives, and policies of a business. So what does this imply? This implies that whoever we call a stakeholder, whatever decisions the business takes, whatever decision they take, it could have an impact on them. So that's why we call them stakeholders. So the decision of the business could affect them directly or indirectly. Do you understand what a stakeholder is here? Yeah. So we have two types of stakeholders. We have internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. Why do we call them internal stakeholders? We call them internal stakeholders because whatever happens, whatever decisions that the business takes, it affects them directly. So it has a direct impact on them. So whatever business decision, whatever business activity that happens within the operation of the business, it affects them directly. That's why we call them internal stakeholders. So examples of internal stakeholders, we have the business owners. So when you talk about the business owners, we're talking about the owners of the business, right? Yeah. Here I wrote, owners are shareholders because they are directly affected with the success or failure of the business. If the business fails, they lose money. They invested, but if the business succeeds, profit increases. So business owners, why do we call them? Why do we call them internal stakeholders? We call them internal stakeholders because they are the ones that put their money into the business. So they could lose all their money if the business fails. So that's why they are. So whatever happens to that business, it affects them directly. Do you understand why we call them internal stakeholders? Mm -hmm. They are internal stakeholders because they invested their own hard earned money into the business. So if the business succeeds, then their return on, on investment comes back. Oh, good, it's good. But if the business fails, then it only affects them more. It affects them, basically it affects them. So business owners are what? They are stake, internal stakeholders because they invested their own money into the business. I think that is clear. Yeah. Then we go to employees. For employees, who are the employees? We're talking about the workers, those that work for the business. So why do we call them internal, employee, uh, internal stakeholders? They are internal stakeholders because they work for the business. So they depend, they depend on business for their livelihood. So these people, they depend on the business. So whatever they do, they are doing because that is where they could earn money for their living. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So they are internal stakeholders because they work for the business. But whatever interest they have, it might collide with the interest of the owners. We're going to talk about that when we are talking about conflicts of stakeholders. Are you with me? Yeah. The interests of stakeholders are different from the interests of business owners. The business owners, they want to make profit. The employees, they want promotion. They want increase in salary. They want job security. This is, these are their own interest. So they would want the business to also succeed. Do you understand employees here? Yes, sir. Great. Then the managers and directors. So when I talk about managers and directors, I wrote they are internal stakeholders because they plan, organize, and strategize on ways in which the business can succeed. They have to show leadership, solve problems, make decisions, settle disputes, and most important, importantly, they have to motivate workers. Managers and directors, they are the ones that run the business, day in, day out of the business. They are involved in, the, they are the ones that strategize on how the business will succeed. So because this is what they do, they also want the business to succeed. Because if the business fails, it, it also affects their CV. It, it could affect their CV. So as a result of that, they would also want the business to succeed. So they plan, they strategize, they make decisions. They control the business, but they must also motivate workers. So that's why we see them as leaders. So they must, they must show leadership. Is it clear? Yes. The fourth one, uh, that's all about 
internal stakeholders. So we go to external. So for external stakeholders, why do we call them external stakeholders? They are external stakeholders because this, they are group of they are group from outside the business, but they have interest. They have interest in the activities of the business. They are group of people outside from outside the business, but have interest in the activities of the business. Do you understand what external stakeholders are now? Yeah. Okay. So what are the examples of external stakeholders? We have the external shareholders or the shareholders. So who are the shareholders? They are investors. So all, they are, all their interest is about financial interest. So they are investing into the business. And what they want back is high dividends. That is their, return, their share of profit. They want their dividends to increase. They want their share value. They want the share value to also increase. Because if it increases, it's good for them. That means they have a return, a very positive return on their investment. Do you understand what who shareholders are? Yeah. They are external stakeholders because they don't operate with, in the business. They don't transact, they don't deal with the business. They have interest financially with the business because they are investors. So all they care about is the business making profit so that their own share of profit, which is the dividend, can increase. Is it clear? Yeah. Great. The, the second one, we have the customers. So for the customers, customers are the kingpin of a business. Without the customers, then we don't even have a business. Yes or no? Yes. So who are these customers? Yeah, I wrote, they buy, they buy goods and services that business sell. Through their purchase, they provide the revenue and profits that business needs to survive. So for the customers, they are the ones that buy what we sell as a business. So in the course of them buying, we make revenue. Making revenue, we also make profit. And the profit we make will also make us what? To, to survive. That means to continue running the business. Without the customers buying from our business, we might not, we, we won't even survive it. That's why we call them the kingpin of the business. So they purchase from us. When they purchase, it, in, it increases our revenue. And as soon as our revenue increases, it has to, it has to, it has to exceed our cost. Then we make profit. Then the profit is what we survive on. Do you understand their interest? Yeah. So for customers, what is their interest? They want quality products. They want it at a reduced price. This is what they are. These are what their interest is. Is it clear? Yeah. They'll go to the creditors. The creditors. What did I write? I, I wrote. They lend money to the business. They have financial interest in the business as they want to be sure the interest on loan is paid and the money is returned at the end of the loan period. So for creditors, what their interest is, is they want to ensure that you are credit worthy. They, have, they lend money to you as a business. They give you money. They loan you money. But before they do that, they want to be sure that you are credit worthy. When we say being credit worthy means you have, you have that tendency of paying back. You are not, being, you are not considered as high risk. Do you understand? So lenders or creditors, they will also want, they would also want your business to succeed because it is only when your business succeeds that you, are, you will be able to pay back your loan and also be able to pay your interest as that when due. Do you understand creditors here? Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Suppliers. Suppliers are also businesses. We could say business to business, B2B. Do you remember B2B? Business to businesses. B2B, okay. So for suppliers, these are businesses that provide raw materials, components, financial services, and utilities for other businesses. So their interest is to, to provide you with what you need to be able to produce the good or the service that you have to provide or render for your, to your customers. So their interest is to provide. And they want to be sure, they want to also make sure that you pay when you have to pay. Yeah. Do you understand? So these are for suppliers. Then the pressure groups. So when we talk about pressure groups, we're talking about groups that can influence decisions of the business. What all what they care about is to ensure that things are done the right way. They are pressure group. They they check they check the undoings of the business in terms of the activity. So examples of uh, examples of pressure groups are the trade union that fight for the rights or that negotiate 
for salary increase of workers that negotiate for conducive environment for workers. Are you with me? Yes. And we have the environmental groups too. What do they do? They try to they ensure that the environment is not polluted. Do you understand? So these are pressure groups. They are also stakeholders. Their interest is different from that of shareholders or from that of creditors. Do you have any question for that? No. Then we have the local community. For the local community, I wrote, businesses are likely to have positive and negative impact on the local community. So when you talk about positive impact, this could be the businesses setting up, creating jobs for the local people. Businesses increasing salaries of local people. This will, this will enhance their, life, their livelihood. This will enhance their living standard because they have job. When they have job, they'll be able to buy. They, it cannot improve their standard of living. So if this occurs as a result of a business setting up in that community, then it is a positive impact. But when we talk about negative impact, pollution, causing havoc in the society, in the community. So the co local community, the local people will criticize businesses for doing that. Is it clear? So that is about the local community. Then we have the government. Government are also external stakeholders. Why are they external stakeholders? They want to be sure that businesses are run ethically. Businesses are run the way they have to be run. Businesses are run legally. They follow the law of the country or the law that guides them. Yeah. So also the inter their interest, they want businesses to succeed. Why do government want businesses to succeed? Because when businesses succeed, it means it increases the wealth of that country, or of that community, of that nation. They have more facilities. Yes or no? Yes. It increases employment opportunity for the people in that country. And what government aim, one of the government aims, one of the government aims is what? To reduce unemployment. So if businesses succeed, they expand their business. And when they expand, what happens? They employ more workers. That reduces unemployment rate, which government is aiming at. And lastly, they pay taxes, which is also why government would want businesses or government would want, would want businesses to succeed. They pay tax, they create jobs. They increase the wealth of the nation. Then the last one of external, fact, ex, external stakeholders is the environment. So when you talk about the environment, the environment, don't think, oh, the environment. How does the environment have? The environment is not human. But what we are talking about is business activities that, the, that could affect the environment. So what happens? We have some people that are, that are what we call them um, environmental agents. All they care about is ensuring that the environment is suitable for living and non-living things. Do you understand? Especially for the living things, they, they ensure that the, the habitats are not destroyed. Climate is well done. Like the climate is conducive. The weather is conducive. Yeah. By ensuring that the business do not pollute the hair, the environment. So here I wrote, the environment. Business activity can have an impact on the environment. For example, a business could release toxic waste into the water system, which could destroy wildlife and its habitat. So what happens here, the environmental agents, they come in place. So they have interest in what the business activity is. So if your business does this, then they have interest in it. They want to ensure that you don't do it anymore. Is it clear? Do you have any question about stakeholders there? Do you have any question, please? No. Okay. So look at the activity and get it done. 